property. So what is the float property? When do you use it? What does it do? How does it affect the rest of my web page? We're going to be covering these basics. So what are we looking at? In front of us we have the most basic web page possibly ever. Uh, we've got a header, a paragraph, and a footer. So let's give ourselves a goal. The purpose of this video is to use CSS floats to add a sidebar over in this region and we'll give it a, a yellow background and we just want to sort of take up this right area and we want this existing paragraph to sort of wrap around it. We're going to use floats to achieve that. So let's take a look at our HTML. So pretty basic stuff here. We've got a div with a class of container and inside it we've got a heading and a paragraph. So remember our goal was to add a sidebar over in this area so let's add a bit of code in between the heading and the paragraph. So all I did was I added a bit of HTML, a div with a class of info box, and just an unordered list to take up space. So if we go back to our page, uh, we can see that this is not at all sidebar. This is just uh, taking up the full width. And we want this yellow box to essentially take up just this area. And we're going to use CSS floats to achieve this. So if we head over to our CSS file, info box, this is the yellow box we just added, we're going to add a new declaration. So the property is float, and we're going to give it a value of right. And if we refresh in our browser, we see some good news and some bad news. So the good news is that our yellow box is a bit of a sidebar now. It's only taking up the right-hand portion of the layout. Our main text is respecting it and wrapping around it. We're almost there. We've almost achieved our layout goal. And the bad news, or at least the confusing news for beginners, is that our container is no longer tall enough for all of our content. We can see that this sidebar is sort of spilling out the bottom. And this sort of illustrates what the float property actually does. So yes, it aligns elements to the far left or the far right. But it also, in a way, removes those elements from the natural flow of the page. Um, so in other words, this container div is acting as if this element doesn't even exist. It's been removed from the page flow. So we need to compensate for that. And the way to do that is to clear the floats. That's a term you're going to hear a lot about in the future, clearing the floats. Now there are many different ways to clear your floats. We're going to start out with the simplest way. So let's head over to our HTML. We're going to create a new element right before the end of our container. So it's going to be a paragraph. It will read, this is the bottom text. So if we refresh our page, we see that there is a bit of new text and it achieved nothing. Our sidebar is still spilling out the bottom. But what if we add a bit of CSS to this new element? So let's give it a class of clear me and let's head over to our style sheet create a new CSS rule and the only declaration we need is clear right now if we refresh our page we see that our container is tall enough to house the sidebar let's take a, uh, a quick look at what is actually going on notice our new paragraph our clear me paragraph is sitting way down at the bottom there's, there's this huge gap in between the two paragraphs. That is what the clear property is doing. Um, ignore this right. This could have as easily have been both. So let's quickly refresh. We see that nothing changes. So let's focus on the clear property. We added this to the element, and instead of the paragraph sitting directly below this paragraph like it is in the markup, let's head over to our HTML. So we see these two paragraphs are, are right next to each other in the markup. But in our browser, we see that this is way down here. That is what the clear attribute is doing. The clear attribute is telling the browser, if there are any floats above this element, we want it to sit beneath them. We want to clear those floats. So I, I think it's starting to possibly click in your head of what the clear attribute is doing. However, the problem now is that in most layouts, we don't necessarily want any text at the bottom of our container. We simply wanted our container to be tall enough to house the sidebar. So I suppose we could remove this text 
and just have an empty paragraph tag and we see that it's gone and that works but it's not exactly semantic and it's not exactly uh, quick and easy to code so now I'm going to show you my preferred methods of clearing floats which is the clear fix now with the clear fix method we don't need any extra HTML so we can begin by deleting this clear me paragraph and when we do this we see that once again our layout is broken but let me show you how quick and easy the clear fix method is all we need to do is add a new class to our parent element the container which houses all of the floated elements so we add a new class here click oops caps lock is on clear fix and we need some corresponding CSS in our style sheet for the class of clear fix so we head over here go ahead and delete this clear me class okay so I just added in all of this to the style sheet do not worry about typing this or memorizing this I will include this in a link and you can go ahead and just copy and paste it into your CSS file but for now we added this to our style sheet and we added this class of clearfix to the container if we refresh the page we see that our container is now tall enough for the sidebar so it is acknowledging the floats we don't have any extra markup at the bottom of our container it's the best of both worlds now if you're curious as to what all of the clearfix CSS is actually doing you don't need to worry about that for now but I'll go ahead and give you a quick recap it's essentially adding a period dynamically at the very bottom of the container element it is then clearing it's applying the clear property to that little period and then it's hiding the period and then these lines down here essentially make sure that the clear fix works in every web browser under the sun so it's something that you can add to your style sheets once forget about it and then just apply that class to the parent element whenever you have floated elements it's a quick and easy fix works in every browser and it's just another tool to have up your sleeve so hopefully after watching this video you now have a basic understanding of CSS floats and how to clear the floats and you're well on your way to creating CSS layouts alright hope you feel